You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. You know Dasher and Dancer, and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid, and Donner and Vixen, but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Tony, Tony Chopper, the blue-nosed reindeer. That's right, guys. We're back with our One Piece series. I could not be more excited to talk about the Drum Island arc where we meet Chopper the reindeer. This is Systematic Geekology. We are the Priest of the Geeks. I'm Joshua Knoll, and in the last week, I've rewatched the Drum Island arc of One Piece twice, once in English, once subbed in Japanese, just for the sake of seeing them both. And I couldn't be more honored than to be here with our fellow host, the one and only, the the original One Piece fan. I think of all of our hosts, she got into it first. Yeah, I did. Elizabeth Pingling and Clyde. Pang, how's it going? Hello. It's going pretty well. I have four wedding cakes this weekend, so... That's... that's all. How many of them are One Piece themed? None, though. <sighs> that's oh, a tragedy. Oh, okay, well, I have four cakes. I shouldn't have said wedding. Two are wedding cakes. One was Lego, so that was fun. Oh, so cool. A little nerdy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's uh, what's the thing you've been geeking out on the most recently? Cakes. Mm, fair enough. And I've been... I've been rewatching Brooklyn Nine-Nine just as background. That's that's a good show. One. So I guess good that's show. It's so good. Yeah. We gotta we gotta do that one day. Well, guys, if you want to hear the other episodes reviewing One Piece, we do have a series going on, and you can go to the show notes down below to see the other reviews of different One Piece arcs and sagas or however. We just kind of divided it up in ways that we thought made sense, to be honest. Yeah, it's not really arcs or anything. Just kind of how we did it, which is different than Netflix did it. Because they're going to cover most of what we're doing now in like four episodes during season two, I think. Anyway, jumping into the actual episode, let's start with kind of a recap of how we get to where this arc starts. Because this arc starts with Nami Sick and they're at Drum Island. Elizabeth, how do we get to this point? So I know they just left the, the Giants Island and then Nami becomes sick and we do not know what she is sick with at the time. We just know we need a doctor. And with the log post, you can only really go to the closest island. And this is how they discovered the island of winter. And so mm-hmm. when, they disco- when they stumble upon the village, the village only gets visited by a quack because the pseudo king... <laughs> takes all the good doctors. So only a quack will come down the mountain every once in a while to help the people. So Luffy, this could be a shipping, you know, or if you will, if you will, Luffy puts Nami on his back and he, you know, proceeds to find her help. Luffy also would have done that for any of them. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I didn't say he wouldn't have Josh. I'm just saying this could be a great shipping moment for them. Ignoring that, the... <laughs> I don't know if we have how much we've gone into how like the grand line works at this point with the um with the dials and all that because I don't remember the other episodes to be fair. That's on me. But once they've got to the grand line, so you know they start in the east blue, everything that happens in Netflix, whatever. Once they make it to the grand line, they're still trying to find the all blue and in order to navigate the grand line, you have this like special compass and it only takes you to one island at a time on a specific path. And if you don't do it, you just get lost. So no matter how much you don't want to go to these islands or stuff, you have to at least get your boat there (laughs) before you have to stay at certain times, too, for the compass to reset to another island. Yeah. So so like you're forced to be there. (laughs) You're pretty much the compass, which. Yeah. At this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's take them to a few different places. We do find out it is Nami's own fault that she's sick, but we find that out in this arc later on. When the doctor's like, I don't know how you would have got this disease. You weren't randomly going around with your belly showing in the middle of a jungle that that you're unaware of what kind of wildlife lives there, have you? And then they do the flashback of her doing that several times. I mean, well, like, you have to have the fan service, so it wasn't really Nami's fault. She was just trying to get the ratings. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it was. Mm -hmm. No, I um, (laughs) I do love this arc. I love how we get here. I love... Honestly, that they just kind of point out, yeah, you have to have a doctor, just kind of the pirate lover in me where I just love pirate history. It's like, yeah, that's um, yeah, many, many, many pirate crews have just died because of sickness. <laughs> you either have to have a doctor or be lucky enough not to get sick, which does not happen when you're on the sea. So it does make a lot of sense 
that this situation would occur. They end up on this island. Of course, it happens to be the snow island because that's just how life works. And of course, it happens to be the island with like no doctors because that's just how life works. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to before we get into like the meat of like the topics and stuff, I want to talk about why we specifically wanted to do this art because we have like on our topic sheet where all the hosts sign up. We are like what episode we want to do in the series and both of us like highlight our name. We have to do this art. Why? Why did you have to do this art? Honestly, Josh, I think I just put everything I could talk about <laughs> down. So I hate to burst your bubble, but there was no particular like. You bolded this one. You didn't bold all of I them. Mean, <laughs> because I can talk about I didn't bold every single one piece. No. Arc. Oh. I don't know. Maybe I was just <laughs> wanting to make that's you think funny. we had a deeper connection than we do. In my mind, it was because of your tattoo. Like that's what like like head cannon was. Is that you have no. the cherry blossom tattoo and you just wanted to talk about it? No, not my tattoo has nothing to do with it. I mean, I do like chopper because we're just talking. I mean, we're just talking about this arc, right? Like yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll I'll mention this stuff island. ahead of time, but mm -hmm. you know, spoilers are fair game, I think. Yeah. But I mean, I do love the Quack Doctor, honestly. Like I feel yeah. like if I had a spiritual She's grandma, great. she would be it. Yeah. So maybe I, that's why. Yeah. This arc I, for some reason was very personal to me. I think A, because I identify with Luffy, and I, I don't know how to like word this correctly. There are certain types of people that I just click with and immediately care deeply for and chopper fits that box of the kind of person that i would just care deeply for and then hearing kind of seeing like such a tragic backstory that he has and how much of an outcast he was and just how fully accepted he was by luffy and the gang without having them having any cause to accept him it just it impacted me deeply and then kind of seeing where he was able to fulfill his mentors you know, wishes in the end, what his mentor spent 30 years trying to perfect to heal the island. And then also the fact that what was healing the island wasn't some kind of great science thing, but more just this idea of beauty was going to heal it. Everything about it just hit me in a very meaningful way. So like for a long time, the background of my phone and computer and everything was this like the last scene of this arc where they have the um, the drum island thing that looks like the stalk of a tree and it looks like a giant cherry blossom fest tree. That was like the background of everything for me because I just loved that particular picture so much. It was so cool. Um, I also do have a cherry blossom tattoo unrelated to pain. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was because I, I had died <laughs> and like I had a old car accident and I had a bunch of scars on my arm and I needed them covered up. And uh, cherry blossom was like personal to me and my mom. And there's this arc of one piece I love. And on top of that, uh, it also is like Japanese culture kind of like represents new life which I think also might be why they use that here when we're talking about like medical stuff and doctors. I feel like it fits really well. Yeah, I don't put that much thought and emotion in almost anything. Um, <laughs> but I'm so thankful for people like you because you balance people like me. <laughs> so why, why do you get the cherry blossom? Because you have the tattoo and you have Luffy's hat. Yeah, I mean, I just have, I mean, it's just down my whole arm. It was easier to connect. It's like a connection piece. Oh, of like you other just thought tattoos. it would look cool. Then you were like, yeah, yeah one piece. Yeah, well, I already, what's it called? I got the Totoro tattoo and I was like, man, Totoro looks hot. I think he needs some shade. I'll probably put a cherry blossom tree. It's like, ooh, <laughs> there's a little spot on this branch. Let me hang Luffy's hat. I was like, ooh, oh, God. <laughs> let me, let me put like, so it's just been kind of like, and I'm like, oh, this is great because then between my other patchwork tattoos, I can just have blossoms like kind of yeah. floating. So it was more just aesthetics, not emotional uh, connection. That makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. sense. So that's kind of where I'm at with why this arc's meaningful to me, all that kind of stuff. And we'll get more into it as we discuss the story. But Elizabeth, if you had to like, I guess the, the easy answer is chopper, but is there any other reasons? Like why is this arc important to like the overall story? Like where does it fit in the narrative? I mean, really they just need to get a doctor and then they also have, I think they strengthen a little bit of a relationship with Vivi. Um, but yeah, it's just, there's so much connection in every episodes and every single mm. arc that goes deeper than what I can even fathom because I'm just like, oh, like 300 episodes later, I'm like, look at us backtrack into this moment. Gosh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's like Odo, like the guy, 
the man who writes the manga, like blows my mind. Cause even like Vivi was really important for a while. And then I just kind of, she just kind of fades out and I was like, okay, well I guess she's not important anymore. And, and boom, I think, yeah, it's almost back. a thousand episodes later. It's like, Oh bam. Now she's like a regular character again. And you're like, excuse me. <laughs> well, even when they, um, when they, you know, spoiler, if you guys haven't seen it and lived under a rock, when they <laughs> kick the, what's the guy's name? The munch guy. Oh yeah. Munch, yeah. Munch. The, the, I forget what his name. Uh, 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 near guy. the end of the ep- near the end of the arc, Luffy literally just calls him Mouth, the annoying Mouth guy. <laughs> yeah, but he, he like he goes was like, "All right, we defeated a bad guy," and he pops up like a thousand episodes later. Yeah, which is crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important because Chopper. You have to kind of have Chopper's background to understand his character. Even a thousand episodes later, one thing that I picked up on watching this is just like because of how long the story is, I feel like you forget how much character progression happens. So I'm rewatching these characters going, that's right. Sanji did kind of used to be a little worse and (laughs) Zoro had a lot less of a purpose back then. And Chopper was a lot more insecure. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, well, he... He was insecure because the doctor, the two doctors are the only humans who ever treated him and accepted him. So, yeah. And all of his reindeer friends wouldn't let him play any of their reindeer games like Monopoly. Yeah. Also, that is actually, <laughs> for those who don't know, that is actually part of it. Chopper couldn't play the games with the other reindeer and he was left out. Quick yeah. random subplot analysis. They definitely gave him the blue nose to contrast with Rudolph, I think. And I, what I like, here's my big take or hot take of the episode, whatever. Uh, Luffy is better than Santa Claus. Santa Claus at the end of Rudolph just picks Rudolph because, hey, you're useful to me. Luffy says, you're my friend. And, and I just think that's food. better. Backup food. <laughs> if you ask Sanji, he's backup food. <laughs> that's what Sanji says. That's not what Luffy said. <laughs> to be fair, though, Luffy was a little sillier. He was like, oh, my God, you're a monster. That's so cool. You're my friend now. <laughs> And it was funny because like it starts off silly, but then Chopper's in a moment where he needs friends and he thinks he's all alone. And he and he says like he says something like, even though I don't have any friends and Luffy is up there in the distance guarding a prize position of Chopper and goes, no, you do have friends. So it starts as this silly thing of Luffy being like, you're going to be my friend. And it ends with Luffy being like, no, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I don't know. I love Luffy for moments like that. It's great. But that's like. Anytime the crew joins Luffy is like, I see you for more than this. You're a part of my crew. Blah, blah, blah. God, yeah. Well, and I think that's also why this arc was really cool was because so in the beginning, you know, the um, when you're in the East Blue, they're picking up crew members left and right, whatever. And it kind of felt like he was done. He finished his crew. So for me, I wasn't expecting him to add someone new. And then you get here and this feels like like. I think from this point on, whenever someone new joins the team, it's almost feels more significant because it's not just him building a team. Now it's bringing people in because he just genuinely likes them or wants them, something like that. You know, like I feel like because it's not just constant, it's a little more rare, feels a little bit more special to me when it happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not the character themselves, just the act of recruiting someone feels more special. <laughs> yeah. OK, so we tease them enough. Could you go ahead and summarize the story? What happens in this arc? Yeah, so Luffy and um, Nami fall madly in love after he saves her life. And False. <laughs> no, that's just, that's just the fan fiction I read. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that. So pretty much uh, Nami wakes up and she finds out that she got bit by a bug because she was doing how she was written and in the jungle with her belly out. It wasn't her fault. Um, (laughs) And that's when we kind of discovered the history of the town, how that they have been taken over by the guy who ate the munch munch fruit. So pretty much he just threatens to eat everyone. Um, Love cannibalism. That's great. (laughs) But you know, they find out that he is bad guy, of course. And we learn about Chopper's backstory, which I think is what Josh is so fondly of. I'm pretty sure I did tear up at this episode. So we learn how Chopper, when he was just a young little reindeer being shunned, meets the doctor. And I can't remember his name, so we're going to call him the doctor. The other doctor that saved Nami. I'm calling her the quack. Okay. They have names. (laughs) That's how I call them. 
and Josh can call them by their proper names. So not uh, jo- Chopper meets the doctor, and that's where he learns medicine for. And everyone kind of hates the doctor, so he was an outcast. So together, Chopper and the doctor were outcasts together. But the only reason why he was an outcast was because he was just a goofy guy who wanted to make cherry blossoms bloom in the winter town. He believed that the beauty of the cherry blossom would heal the hearts of the whole island to add beauty in this winter wasteland. And so you really just see the dynamics of how close they get. And in learning that backstory, the doctor would talk about how the pirate symbol, the Jolly Roger, is a fan of, is a symbol of freedom and is a symbol of like pretty much having your, like, is the life, like this is where dreams can happen like blah, blah, blah. So when Chopper is reading through medicine book or herbs or whatever he's reading, he sees, I think it was a mushroom, if I remember correctly. Uh, And he sees the pirate sign. So of course he's going to pick that mushroom and give it to the doctor so he would feel better. Mm -hmm. And this is what I mean by killing your mentors. Yeah, because the crossbones was like the toxic symbol. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He thought it was a Jolly Roger. Yes, because the doctor was sick. And Mm -hmm. so Chopper was like, I am going to save you. Isn't that so sad? God, it's so tragic, especially because the doctor tries to kick Chopper out. It's like, I don't want you anymore. I healed you. Mm -hmm. I don't need you around. And it's like, it turns out it's really just that the doctor was sick and he didn't want Chopper to see him die. Yeah, he wanted Chopper to get on his own two feet. And then Chopper ends up killing him. It's like uh, the irony. Yeah. It's like, oh man. Yeah, he, I mean, it, he for sure sped up the process, and of course, the quack doctor who was like the only friend didn't make it any better. She was like, "You fool! You've killed him!" Yeah, jerk. Yeah, I can't pronounce either of their names for the record. So it's like so- Doctor Hiruluk, and the other one's like K U R E H A. I don't know how to pronounce that, but she's like a lot of people think she's like a witch doctor, so they just call her like the witch. So I just call yeah. her the witch. That works. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, it was so interesting, too. So Dr. Hiruluk, whatever, Chopper's mentor, he <laughs> he like he tried to heal people through a different, bunch of different means. He was largely unsuccessful. But what he was successful at was kind of teaching Chopper like the principles of what a doctor is. A doctor cares for someone, even if they're the bad guy, even if they don't deserve medical attention. It's our duty to give it to them. Which comes out later when Chopper's like fighting people and instead of like finishing them off, he's like, no, my duty is to help people heal, not beat the bad guy. And Chopper does kind of hold on to that throughout the series. It doesn't come up as often, but it's interesting. Like he keeps these principles. The reason that I thought was interesting with the Jolly Roger, the two, though, was um, the doctor kind of taught Chopper. This is like we want to fight. Doctors fight like pirates fight. And in context of Drum Island where all the doctors were kind of taken away. It's interesting because the government is using like the medical system to take advantage of the people, like reframing doctors from seeing people. And in one piece, the pirates are kind of like the anti-establishment, the anti-government, the government is evil. So we need some pirates. Some pirates are still bad guys. Some pirates are good guys like Luffy. And it's kind of like this weird anti-government thing. So it's interesting in, in a land where the medical system is corrupt, that that is what the doctor clinged to, and that's what Chopper learned from. Um, I don't think the witch doctor ever really did any pirate stuff, though, right? She was just kind of like, I'll help people, but you're giving me your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, I'm, I healed your son. Give me 50% of whatever this bar makes, all of its assets. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else. The, the, the Chopper's mentor, whenever he was trying to like create the cherry blossoms on the island everyone thought it was crazy because it's a snow island and he developed this thing and he said it would do it and chopper thought that he had administered it near the end and then couldn't tell that it did anything i thought it didn't do anything and i thought it was a failure and he was so sad and that's when they're leaving and they look back and the whole island looks like one big cherry blossom tree so it's like they thought the doctor was a failure even to the end chopper thought he wasn't able to finish it and then it's like oh wait there it is And the whole reason that started this was the mentor saw a patient like 40 years, 50 years or something ago where this person was dying, but he saw something beautiful and that allowed him to heal, which real life, there is a lot of medical studies that show perceiving beauty in some way actually does cause the human body to heal itself. 
So it's not unfounded. Also, my other podcast, Whole Church Podcast, we're doing a series on it. Elizabeth was a guest once. So check that out. I might put that link in the show notes too. Um, but yeah, okay. And then as far as what happens with the guy who ate the munch munch fruit, the annoying mouth and how Luffy saves the island. Do you want to break that down for them? Because we can't leave them with oppressive government and medical system being evil. It yeah, ends on this, a happy note. <laughs> this part is like the fight scene is kind of hazy to me, but I just know like he, how did he defeat him? I can't, I know he defeated him. And yeah. I feel like he did, he did something very Luffy like, but yeah, I just he, can't think of what it was. God, well, I feel like I can't. I just saw it and I can't remember. I, I remember all the things leading up to it. Cause like originally the, the guy goes to the castle because he'd been away from the Island for so long and he took all the doctors away and he came back because mm -hmm. he had been the one oppressing all these people. And even though he was gone, the people were still oppressed because they didn't have any doctors, mm -hmm. but he goes up to like his old castle and that's where the witch doctor and chopper have been staying. And they have the flag from chopper's mentor up on top of the castle. And he's like, that can't be here. That's a disgrace and all this stuff. And he goes to shoot the flag. And this whole time, like they're having the fight scene outside. Luffy is inside looking for a sweater and refuses to wear Nami's sweater. And eventually Nami convinces him just like put on the sweater, dude. <laughs> like He's like, no, it's cold outside. I can't go out with this. I can't go out with a girl sweater on. <laughs> but he's OK with his flip flops. Yeah. Yeah, it makes no sense. But eventually he puts the sweater on right. Of course, right when the guy goes to shoot the flag down off the castle and he's like, boom, you see the explosion, the smoke fades away. And instead of the flag being gone, there's just Luffy standing in front of the flag, holding it, doing this big heroic speech of you will not harm this flag kind of deal. And the guy keeps shooting it like, ah, oh, now he's just destroyed. He took that shot head on and Luffy's just standing there with the flag. <laughs> and that's when Chopper says, I might not have anybody. I might not have any friends, but I will not let you hurt that flag. And he's like, I'm going to fight you now. And Luffy goes, you do have friends, flings down from the castle. And mind you, for Chopper, you see all these stories of like other reindeer, like fighting him and beating him up because he had a blue nose. He looked weird. He was like an outcast. So he didn't fit into nature. He eats what's called a human human fruit. So he can like transport to human. And when he does that, he kind of looks like a monster. So people thought he was like the Yeti. So humans wouldn't associate with them. And like you said, only the doctors were really associated with him. He's never had a friend. So here Luffy is just thinking, here's a cool reindeer. This is my friend now. And he's just kind of playing around. And even the like witch doctor says at some point, like, you use that word friend. And I don't think he knows what that word means to Chopper. He doesn't realize how powerful that word is. And Luffy really didn't. He's like, you're my friend. And then at the end, he's like, nah, you're my friend. And then he destroys the bad guy. But what was what I do remember, it was funny, like Chopper is going to fight the other bad guys, like the henchmen, more or less. And Luffy just starts watching because Chopper has like the um, what's the ball called? His rumble, balls. the rumble ball. Yeah. So he created this thing to like do different transformations. So he's not just reindeer or human thing. So he has like all these different transformations <laughs> and he does it. And Luffy's just watching. Like, oh, that's so cool. And uh, the guy with the big mouth like, aren't you going to fight me? What are you doing? You're just watching him. And he's like, yeah, look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> and Luffy's just totally ignoring the actual fight that he's in. I think it must be one of those where Luffy just kind of like turns around and punches the guy at the end. Because mm -hmm. Luffy did not have a hard time with this guy. <laughs> no, the fight was very like forgettable. Yeah, it was just, OK, my turn now. Boom. Guy, guy is gone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, man, I just there's so many beats in this arc that are interesting. Cause like you have that storyline of like the medical system, you have that, like what does friendship mean? You have the like outcast line. You even have like a lot of like our animals, humans. Cause you even have like the, the um, what were the giant bunnies called? Do you remember? No, they were just like the snow. Yeah. yeah like bunnies. giant snow monster bunnies are in mm -hmm. this, <laughs> which sounds so ridiculous, <laughs> but you know, they kept trying to attack Luffy and Sanji while they were transporting Nami. And at some point, one is like hurt and buried under the snow after Luffy punched it and Luffy just pulls it up. And then later on, the animals help them. And just kind of like you have this like throughout the series of like, how do we treat animals? Do we treat them well? We have this like, what does it mean to be a friend? What does it mean to be a doctor? What does it mean to have suppressive government or good health care system? Um, what are some of the other big themes you can think of? Or is that all of them? That's all of them I can think of i know this is where we first learn about the animal type of fruit so like a new species yeah, those are like the zoan the zoan yeah. devil fruit 
is now introduced. So that was a major point. Now I'm like, I'm always like, what are the odds a reindeer will find the human human fruit? Interesting. But that's just how it's written. Now there's a lot of fan theories around Chopper. Have you, have you, how many of those have you read? <laughs> None. Yeah. There's a that's lot of people who don't think he ate the human human fruit. They think it's something else. Oh. But I don't know. Cause you know, I always thought that that was crazy. Like whatever fan fiction, just like I did, like people were like, Luffy didn't really eat the gum gum fruit. It was this other thing. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Stupid people. That's fanfic. And then it's like, oh, Luffy, spoiler, really didn't eat the gum fruit. There really was what? something different. And I'm like, now I'm just like, okay, you know what? Maybe they got something right. Maybe they're onto Dude, something with this chopper. Some of these fans be detectives and they just figure it all out. Yeah. And we just kind of watch and wait. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm trying to think. So did we summarize the whole arc? Are we missing any like major things? I think that's pretty much it. I feel like the most, I guess you could say. Zoro gets lost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, always. But I think like the most dilemma when we talk about is pretty much just like the oppression of government. Uh, like that's not, But he was, like I said, the fake king. He took the power away from someone else. So he wasn't really a bad ruler. He was just a dictator. He wasn't like the throne wasn't really rightfully his. Yeah. But I do think it's interesting that like his way of suppressing everybody was like through the medical system, especially this is like really nerdy of me. But like when you look at like the Roman Empire and how Rome fell, it was because of like largely it has a lot to do with how they treated teachers and how they treated the healthcare system. So if you Which really look into it, <laughs> U.S. about to fall, then. That's what I'm saying, man. I'm like, <laughs> why are we doing this? This is like history repeats itself because <laughs> what Rome did that was different, though, Rome would like whenever they conquered like a country, or whatever, the people that they took captive were like, OK, so you're going to be the teachers and the hospital workers. You know what happens? We have a lot of people that you've suppressed teaching your children. <laughs> they teach them things you don't want them to know. And it kind of topples the whole system. And say they were like healthcare. How much do you think these people from other countries you conquered really want you to survive your injuries? Not that much, guys. <laughs> but yeah, so so it's interesting how like, and I think you can see it through all throughout history. Whenever you don't value your educators and the healthcare workers, that's when you're about to fall. <laughs> and yeah, we're definitely seeing that in America. And I think we see that especially with, ed I don't know if we see it with educators in this system, but we definitely see it with like hospital workers, how they... Even the doctor they did have, they kind of treated like crap and only the one guy cared when he died. Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, well, even then, like there's a reason why the health, like there's always a teacher shortage and everyone's leaving the profession in droves. If I was a regular teacher and I didn't teach culinary, I would not be teaching. Yeah. No, I, I think people who are educators are either incredibly brave, morally upright people yeah. or stupid because <laughs> I'm like. It's like we, There's no pay in this. Not, Why are you doing this? For summers off. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. But so so thinking of Drum Island itself, how would you describe like exactly what happened to the other medical people? Because it wasn't just the one doctor. There were others before the mouth guy came. I mean, but didn't the, the guy like had his own private like army of doctors? Like, yeah, I think he feet. took all the doctors, turned them into an army and then left. And then he was a really basic. He he he's kind of a pathetic bad guy. So he kept losing. So he lost all of his doctors. Mm -hmm. And did he come back thinking he was going to get more doctors or did he just come back thinking he couldn't do it out there? So he'll just come back and be king again. I think that was it. He went to go conquer he went to go conquer a better island, but he yeah. couldn't do it. So he came back to retake his island. Yeah. One one thing that I also thought was interesting is even when he wasn't there, everybody was still living like suppressed, even though the government wasn't even present anymore. So like kind of like that um, they residual effect. Mentally. Yeah. yeah. Like once they had been suppressed, it was like the after effect, like they couldn't build back up from how he had damaged the island, I guess. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because I don't know, like it doesn't seem like Chopper's mentor, whatever his name was, put that much thought into it. But 
because that was like what was actually hurting them was their own mentality that they had been suppressed and they didn't feel like they could build themselves up. Beauty actually really probably would have helped in that situation. <laughs> they needed something to inspire them. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it was in the, I mean, there's a reason like in Alaska, they have these, what they call them like happy lights or something like that. So when it's darkness, like if you do not see sunlight, like mm -hmm. you will get depressed. And so with this being a wintry, like snowstorm land, they didn't see sunlight for so long. So just having that little bit of like that cherry blossom, that bright, beautiful mm -hmm. image that they haven't seen, put a little pep in their step, yeah. gave them new meaning. Kind of makes me think of the beginning of Narnia too. Like Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe when they came up and everything snow and hopeless. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned some of the bigger themes. I kind of want to go ahead and talk about it. So we talked about beauty a little bit. Um, I feel like caring for animals was there, but I don't think it was like really a main focus. I, I feel like the biggest focus, like you said, was like the oppressive government, the healthcare system stuff. And then I think friendship was a really big thing. Yeah, you, just, It can just be like being inclusive is mean? a big one. Like, yeah. and not really animal abuse because it wasn't the fact that, but just being inclusive. So if someone's different than you, don't shun them. Yeah. I think too, because, you know, whenever you see Chopper's back story, he's like, he's with the humans and they want to kill him because he's a monster. And one thing that I like about anime is that you could do a lot of stuff that you can't do in cartoon, like normal cartoons. And you could do like a lot of your stuff. Mentor. Yeah. <laughs> and you do a lot of stuff that you can't do in like live action because you can be extra ridiculous because it's anime. And one of the things here that I actually think is really merited is when you see Chopper, not just humans chasing him, them shooting him, him bleeding, him fainting, him being like actually deeply wounded. Right. And when he goes to the other reindeers, it's not like, oh, they wouldn't let him play reindeer games. It's no, they're trying to bash his head in because he doesn't belong with them. And you're seeing him all bloodied up, beat up. You know, you see when the doctor tries to kick him out and won't let him stay with him anymore. He doesn't know where else to go. And the doctor says, it's because you don't need my help anymore. So what's he do? He cuts himself and you see Chopper bleeding. And it's like seeing that, I feel like gives it a lot more of an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to like inclusiveness or friendship, because I feel like those kind of go hand in hand in this story. What can we learn from that? Like, not even just as Christians, but just as like human beings. What do we learn from this arc that tells us like how to be better? <laughs> well, I mentioned it before, but like just being kind, being inclusive. Like this, everyone should hopefully have a friend. <laughs> it's just sad if you think about like if someone has yeah. absolutely no friends. I mean, if you're a turd, that's one thing. But obviously Chopper <laughs> wanted that relationship as um, aspect and was denied and because of that, he had social dilemmas, meaning whenever um, he puts on like a front where he tries to act big and tough and he's like, don't compliment me, you idiot. Like, what do you think? Do you think that makes me happy? But he's really eating it up. So now because of the way he was treated, you can even relate that to trauma. And now he's having trouble emotionally connecting with others. And you see him kind of work through that as he gets more used to being in a relationship with humans or yeah. just friendships. Yeah. And that's, what's interesting is like, as you go throughout the show over like the next thousand episodes is you see, like, I think Chopper's character builds a lot, but it's almost like he never learns how to express himself differently. Mm -hmm. So like at this point in the show, he's like genuinely trying to put on a tough guy act. Right. But by the time you get like a thousand episodes later, he's like blushing and very obviously showing emotion going, I don't need you to compliment me. <laughs> And it's yeah. like he's still saying the same thing, but you could tell he's like physically reacting differently towards them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I really appreciated that. And I think the thing that that sticks out the most to me, I'm trying to think of the right way to word it, because there is good and bad examples of this. And I think there's a really good example here. Luffy did not learn about Chopper's backstory and go, oh, how can we reach out to him? How can we be there for him? How can we, you know, preach the gospel of piracy to him or anything like that, right? Luffy was just being Luffy. That was it. <laughs> Luffy saw some reindeer talking to it. Oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. And you have a blue nose? That's wild. And Luffy just thinks it's cool. And Luffy's just kind of like being Luffy, right? <laughs> And then when it came to a point that mattered, Luffy wasn't just defending him because, oh, we need a pirate on our crew. And if I do this, he'll join us. Luffy was straight up 
no, this is wrong. I'm going to stand up for what's right. And I think that's why it meant so much to Chopper. I feel like because of how insecure Chopper was, if Luffy knew, I don't think it would have meant as much. Mm -hmm. But I think it was because Luffy was just genuinely wanted to be his friend. Genuinely was just thought Chopper was cool, you know? And when I think of that, like, not just as a Christian, but like as a human, and I'm going to use Bible because I am a Christian, but there's moments in my life where I just thought that I was just there. Um, church camp's a good example. I was like, you know, I worked at church camp. I did what I was told to do. That was it, right? And then years later, someone will be like, hey, you said this, and it meant a lot to me. And I was like, I was just saying what I thought was right. You know, like it wasn't like you're trying to say something to somebody. The bad part is sometimes you say stuff and you thought it was no big deal. And then later you learn that you deeply hurt someone on accident, right? Yeah, be like that. Yeah. And what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get at is you might know, not know everyone's story. You might not know what's going on in other people's lives. But I feel like if you're right yourself, if that makes sense, like if you're doing things right and you're behaving right and saying the right, not saying the right things because you're trying to say the right things, but like if from the abundance of the mouth, heart, the mouth speaks, right? So like if your heart is in the right place and you're doing the right things, you might not know how you're impacting people, but you might be reaching out to someone like Chopper who's never had a friend in his entire life. And you're saying, hey, we're going to be friends. And you have no idea what that means to him. But it comes with that warning of you also might just think you're joking around. Tell someone like, no, nah, I wouldn't be your friend. But you actually said that to someone like Chopper and it hurt deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thoughts. I think also um, you just don't know someone's backstory um, in any relationship or situation. And this could be kind of said with all the crew as we I, I think One Piece does the best with backstories. Um, in any of mm -hmm. like series yeah. I've ever seen, but you just don't know someone's story until you actually slow down and ask them. So you should always be mindful of what you say. Like just the, um, this past Sunday, my husband, <laughs> um, for those who is all of our listeners who do not know my husband, he is the kindest guy ever. He is a super encourager. He will be your biggest cheerleader, biggest fan. And your biggest support in anything he does. And he made a joke with someone, one of the worship leaders, because, and he thinks it's so funny because of the way she pronounced a word when she sings. And he was like, I was thinking about you because, you know, we were listening to the song and like, like that's his, like, you know, when you pinpoint something fun about a person. And then she got so butt hurt. And I'm like, to the point of oh. like worship, worship first service was Awkward. Okay. No, it wasn't awkward. It was okay because she was a worship leader. And oh, I can yeah. say this because no one, at, um, I don't think any of these people who know who I'm talking about would um, make connection. But then he went to go hug her in between service like, and she backed away from him. Oh. And he was like, hey, what, what's up? And so she held on to this offense the whole entire first service. And so Taylor's like, you know, that's not what I meant. And I just think of all the time, I'm just watching it happen too. And I watched like the first interaction happen. I was like, Taylor, you need to stop. Like it's your joke. Like she's not vibing with what you're joking with. <laughs> but like, so they talked and he was like, but I'm like, he has put so much encouragement into the bank. He could have made a withdrawal, but then worship second service was so much different once the offense was taken out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you just don't know, even if you're just joking, the power of your words, how it affects someone. But then more importantly, you don't know how when you affect someone, that circle of their influence is now affected. Because worship second service was a whole lot different worship first service when she wasn't carrying that offense by a funny mm. joke my husband made. Man. So watch what you say, people. And you do actually briefly see that in this. I forgot about the moment. Luffy does hurt Chopper's feelings because Luffy and Sanji were the ones who saw him talking and like walking around like a human. Yeah, they thought it was so cool, but, yeah, but what they, they was said, very insecure about it. Yeah, because Luffy said, oh, my God, you're a monster. And he starts running away. But Luffy's next word were, that was the coolest thing ever. Because Luffy just thought, monsters are cool. You're a monster. Mm -hmm. But what Chopper heard was he had been hunted down and literally shot several times because people thought he was a monster. And this guy thinks he's a monster. So he's like, I'm running away now. This guy hates me. And it wasn't till later that he kind of learned Luffy a little bit and went, oh, no, Luffy is an idiot <laughs> and just thinks that monsters are cool. It said you're a monster. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Good old Luffy. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that actually might be the biggest takeaway. It's just kind of a there is a power in friendship that is I feel like too often we see where movies and shows focus on just romance and romance is powerful, too. It's fantastic. Yeah. But I, I, I like that. I like when shows also show the strength of friendship, like Lord of the Rings and like the Drum Island arc of One Piece, because what Chopper needed wasn't a girlfriend. Chopper just needed a friend. And it couldn't I don't think it could have been anyone other than somebody who was just going to look at him for who he was and say, that's freaking cool, dude. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you need. You just need to be able to look at people for who they are and say, that's freaking cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, guys, this is it for this this arc. Um, I think we're just bringing it back to like the Netflix. If I had to guess, I want to see what your thoughts are. So the way they did season one, I think what they'll do for season two is they'll do two episodes on Impel Down. One episode or two episodes leading up to Drum Island, two for Drum Island, and then two are going to be Alabaster. What do you think? When you said Impel Down, did you mean Logtown? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I was like, uh-uh. No, Impel Down is going to be its own whole season if they get that far. And if they right. do, I might not make it. Yeah, yeah. So if it's going to be eight episodes, I feel like they can do Logtown in one episode. I think they honest. could. But there was a lot that they did then. season one that I thought they could do in one episode. Yeah, but I feel but, like yeah. they'll do it in one. So I think it would be a log town. I feel like Chopper could be one episode. I feel like they might rush it a little bit. That's just my opinion. Because no, they, I think, they, I really think season two, they want to end with Alabaster. Like end as in beginning of Crocodile or ending end, with end of Crocodile. Crocodile? Yeah. Okay, I can see that. But then you still have, because after, what's after Snow Island again? Crocodile. Is that it? He's Is next. It, yeah. Oh, uh, and then I feel like there's a little bit of filler, so maybe. Yeah, I could see what would be, to me, what I think would be the smartest route if Netflix, for some reason, is listening and they do another eight episodes for season two. Um, what Lockdown if we got is ten? One. Ten would be wild. Would be we would all, we would all great. just lose our mind. But if it's eight again, Lockdown one, one leading up to Drum Island, two for Drum Island, and then four whole episodes of Crocodile. Because that arc no. is like, it's huge. Like, not huge, but it's a pretty big arc. And when I said I had a tied for my three favorite arcs, it's this one, it's Crocodile, and then it's Impel Down. Those three are great. But I had to do this one because it's personal to me. Crocodile is not as personal, and I think TJ just knows it better. So he'll be on that episode, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how I'm thinking Netflix is going to do it. Also, for those wondering, I have cried like a total of like five times at television. Twice was because of One Piece. One of those times was Drum Island. The other was Impel Down. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it, I say watch Drum Island. I think it's something you could watch on its own. I don't really think you need the rest of One Piece to watch it. I think it can stand on its own if it needs if it needed to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And with that, we're going to go ahead, wrap this one up. Remember, you can subscribe on Patreon or whatever for the extra question we're going to do here at the end. We're going to be asking about if we had a Zoan fruit, which one we'd want to do. So it'll be fun. But subscribe. Check it out. Um, for recommendations, actually, I just started a comic I'm going to recommend. That's a It's it's a whole huge series that I didn't know Scotty Young did that apparently is his most personal work, according to him. Middle West. It's cool. Uh, there's trolls, foxes, ghosts. It's a good time. So if you're into graphic novels, Scotty Young, Middle West, great read. What about you? So even though I haven't watched it yet, this is what I'm going to recommend. Spy <laughs> Family. Well, because season two is out and I haven't had a chance to watch season two. Oh, is it a show? Yeah. Yes. And I thought, I thought that was just like y'all were saying Spy Family and you were just talking about like all the Spy Kids movies. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So pretty so much. Um, right now. <laughs> so the second season just came, but pretty much it is a um, a spy who needs to do in order to do this operation, he needs to find a wife and child because the only way to get close to his target is through the children of this prestigious college. That sounds like a sitcom. So he adopts a kid who just happens to be a psychic who can Ooh. read minds, but now he needs to, you know, find a wife. So like the family looks legit and he marry he fake marries an assassin. And so the person who is an assassin wants to get married because they are finding all like, I guess the, like the workers like that. And so older single women look more like risky type deal that and getting sense. stopped. And so she needed to find a husband. He needed to find a wife. And the um, 
girl who didn't really have a good childhood and we it's like it's hinted that she's been experimented on she can read all the minds but she just thinks she's living her best life in a movie pretty much hmm. it's pretty wild it's yeah, definitely know. different than i thought <laughs> spy family season two just came out so go watch season one and I, i'm fairly sure you and kino are doing an episode on it in december actually spy family i just didn't know what it was yeah y'all signed up for it on the topics list and i was like hmm and yeah, they can do that. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Anyway, guys, <laughs> spoiler for future systematic ecology episodes aside, don't forget if you want to hear the rest of our One Piece reviews, you can go to the show notes down below. We have a playlist for with all of them there. Check out our Instagram for some regular posts, reels of our comic book pull list. Um, right now, TJ, Will, Nick, and Sari are all at Theology Beer Camp when we're recording this, and they're sending us pictures from that. And I'm sure that some of those will be up on Instagram as well. Um, so check it out. Remember, we're doing that extra question over on Apple Podcast and Patreon and all that stuff. So subscribe. And remember, we're all the chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.